Hi, I'm Chance Finucane, Chief Investment Officer at Oxbow Advisors. Our stock portfolios continue to be defensively positioned to withstand the risk of a volatile market ahead. Today we want to discuss investor complacency, increasing pressure on consumers and small businesses, and a note on IPOs. First, this is one of the longest stock rallies in decades in which the price has not gotten back above its previous record high. Normally, a stock market rally after a correction is explosive, but when it's been 400 days or more and the market has not reached a new record high, in almost every case in the past 60 years, a bear market and recession have occurred. It's been more than 400 days since the last market high in January 2022. We experienced a bear market last year, but not a recession. We expect a recession to occur before a new high in stocks is reached. More investors believe that the economy will make a soft landing and avoid a recession. We can see that in the lack of volatility in the stock market today. The volatility index, or VIX, of the S&P 500 recently dropped below 13, a level that hasn't been recorded in nearly four years. When the stock market is this calm, we believe it's best to keep some balance in the portfolio because the assumption that everything will be okay is already priced into the market. Leading indicators in the labor market still point to weakness ahead in employment and the economy. In this example, it's the percentage of people surveyed by conference board that think jobs are plentiful in the marketplace. When this figure peaks and begins a significant decline, a recession has followed in every example going back to the 1960s. Consumers continue to have a tougher time making ends meet. We can see that in rising loan delinquency rates. The delinquency rates for credit card loans, auto loans, and all consumer loans have been trending upward for two years. They are now at levels last seen 10 to 13 years ago. The difference is back then the delinquency rates were improving. We don't expect the current negative trend to reverse anytime soon. A big reason we expect loan delinquency rates to remain a problem is how high interest rates are on consumer loans today. The 7.5% rate on a 48-month car loan is about as high as we've seen in the nearly 20 years of recorded data. And the interest rate on credit card balances is now above 21%. That's the highest in at least 30 years. And with the 30-year fixed mortgage rate back up to 7.5%, the percentage of pending home sales that are being canceled is rising back toward record levels. High interest rates do not impact all consumers at once, but the longer that rates stay this high, more households that need to buy a car or home or run up a credit card balance are negatively impacted by the increase in interest expense. We've been seeing the impact of inflation and higher interest rates on retail sales throughout this year. Over the past 30 years, U.S. retail sales grow about 45 to 5% per year and grow about 2% faster than the inflation rate. That has not been the case in 2023. For the past 10 months, retail sales growth has not kept up with inflation. When we're worried about a weak consumer, it's time to rotate into the most stable consumer stocks. This chart shows the earnings per share of the consumer discretionary sector in red and the earnings for consumer staples in blue. The difference in volatility between the two lines is obvious. Consumer discretionary can perform very well in good times, but when concerns about a recession are present, it's time to switch into the much steadier earnings of consumer staples. One other thing to note about this chart, the yellow shaded areas are periods when the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates. You'll notice that consumer discretionary earnings tend to decline after the hiking cycles have ended. We're near the end of the current hiking cycle, which suggests a difficult environment for discretionary earnings going forward. The gap in performance between discretionary and staples during a recessionary bear market is evident in their share price movement as well. On the right side, you'll see the staples industries have performed relatively well in recessionary bear markets. Meanwhile, the share prices of the discretionary industries declined more than 30% on average. Autos are the worst of the bunch. Beware of owning an auto stock when recession risk is high. If this is the start of a new bull market and the economy is in good shape, we would expect small businesses to be thriving. Unfortunately, that's not the case. The National Federation of Independent Business surveys small business owners regularly. In these two charts, we see labor cost increases are expected to remain high and revenue growth is declining. The largest companies in the country may be doing okay, but the vast majority of businesses are having a difficult time. We're seeing similar weakness in the performance of the smaller companies within the stock market too. 
If last year was a great low in the stock market, we would expect an index of smaller stocks like the Russell 2000 to skyrocket higher. Instead, this index is up less than 10% from its lows last year and is still down by 25% from its high two years ago. That's not a sign of a broadly healthy market. Finally, after next to no companies went public last year, this month there were two high-profile IPOs, Arm Holdings and Instacart. Given a bounce back in the IPO market, we wanted to offer this friendly reminder. Do not chase hot IPOs. These companies may be popular and exciting, but they often do not have the characteristics that represent a high quality business. We think an investor is better off owning a set of strong businesses that have already established a track record of delivering for shareholders. We hope that gives you an idea of why we continue to be defensively positioned in our stock portfolios. If you have any questions about this, please contact us. We like to provide the information we think is most valuable for investors. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.